Hey, time travelers, are you having a difficult time trying to get your generations in stable diffusion to make better hands? Like, this could be better? Like, you keep trying, and that's the best you can get them? And all the videos that you found about hands on YouTube don't help you because the person's hard to watch because it's hard to understand what they're saying or they say distracting things like copy or parameters or they use an AI image that just kind of wobbles with a scathing AI voice in the background or it's just a guy that talks like this and he hovers his mouse over one setting and goes on and on and on and on and then when the important setting down here he just like glazes over it. Do you want to learn how to make better images? Like these ones, like these hands are decent, decent, decent hands there, decently looking hands there, there, and there. Well, I'm going to show you how I figured out how to get better hands using a plugin I found. This is my look of disapproval. All right, back to my demonstration pictures that I have right here. The first step that you want to do to help you make better hands is to look for new models that have come out recently and also look at your favorite models. One of the frustrating things for me is that I'll learn how to prompt my favorite models and I'll do that a lot. But then they come out with new models and you use your prompts from your old things and modify them or whatever. It doesn't quite work in the new models. So I, f I feel your, your pain and frustration there, but you still have to do it every now and then so you get better images because new stuff is coming out all the time. Realistic Vision 4.0 just dropped nine days ago. And and that's what this image is. Check this out. I have a plugin that detects the face and the hand, and that's the before and that's the after. But look at the before, the hand is pretty decent. And the after, the the plugin fixes the hand and the face to make it much better. And this is an old model I decided to test that's anime to see how it did. And the problem with this one is I had to generate a bunch of images until it had a halfway decent hand. And you can see how it improved it before, after. Look what, look, look also that what it does to the face. And this one's called Tune You. I have to zoom in for each one because I only did 512 by 512 on this one. But anyways, I digress. Before, after, before, after. You see how much more detail is in the hands there? This one's from a model called Photon, before, after. And in my opinion, this model does not need this plugin. Obviously, links to all the models that I'm using are in the description of what's it below. Here's another model from Photon, but you can see how much it improves the face. See that, before, after. But in this case, it really helped the hands on this generation, before, after. And here's one from Protogen, one of my favorite anime style models. Before, after, before, after. So the second thing you want to do to help you generate better hands is when you are on Civit AI and you are looking at other people's image prompts, like looking in here, look for stuff that they put to improve their images, like poorly drawn hands. Sometimes you'll stumble across a embedding, bad dream, an unrealistic dream. These are obviously not normal tokens. And what a token is, is a word or set of words that an AI recognizes as a certain thing in a vector. What's a vector? <sighs> Think of it as a multi-dimensional connected dots drawing that connects words together with context to other words. But there are ways in Stable Diffusion to make your own embeddings. Click this card up here if you want to learn how to make embeddings of people's faces. Um, it seems to be a popular video on my channel. But these embeddings people have made with a bunch of negative prompts inside to save you time. So I'll demonstrate with this image. I'll just take this image here and recycle the seed. So I'm using that seed and I set the batch count to one. And they're using this embedding, this one, and this one, and this one. I added these so that I wouldn't get in trouble with my generation on this video, lol. And then I added this one because I don't want her to put her hands in her pockets for the demonstration. Now first, I'm gonna demonstrate the plugin, which is a detailer. I'm gonna enable it. And the first model is for faces and the second one is for hands. I'm gonna generate it again. Don't worry, while this generates, I will show you how to install this plugin. In this case, here's the before and here's the after. And I'll zoom in a little bit because I didn't make it high res. It could be better, but one, two, three, four. 
It made five fingers, which is weird, where the original had four, sort of. But it tried to improve it, right? That's the point. What I'm doing is I'm showing you the most common negative prompt that I've been using recently, and this is based off of these embeddings I'm talking about, which I go to extended networks, and then I go to my textual inversion, and I type fast, so I get the fast negative embedding. Put that in the beginning, hit comma, and then I put easy, easy negative, comma, and then if I'm doing an anime one, I'll add this one, bad artist slash anime, bad hands is here, you can use that. Let's not use this this time because it was in the prompt that I found on Civit AI, so we can see the difference. And I also like to use realistic vision, negative embedding. Now I'm going to put links in the description of what's it stingy below to give you guys a head start. I'm going to give you links to these three. I highly recommend that when you're looking at people's prompts, you go and you Google, and I'm going to show you how to Google it. For example, cyber realistic negative embedding that I saw in someone's prompt once. I cut it out of the prompt and went to Google and I searched stable diffusion and just the name of it. Civit AI came up. Sometimes I put Civit AI into the Google search. All right, here it is. And when you download it, it goes into your Stable Diffusion, Stable Diffusion Web UI embeddings folder. You can see that I, that's why I've got so many of these, because I just found them and put them in my folder. Now I'm going to press Control Enter to generate this, hide the extended network so I can see when it's done. And we're going to see how this image compares to the other one that had a lot more going on in the negative prompt. All right, it's done. I'll click on that. A lot better hand. Well, even both the hands. Look at that. So we'll zoom in on it a little bit. Go over here. Here's the before. Pretty decent hands with the before. And here's the after. So the next tip for getting better anything is to use highres.fx. Check this. I like to use the realistic rescaler. I'm actually going to link in the descriptables where to find the realistic rescaler. And when you find the file for it, I'll show you what folder to put it in. Go to your Stable Diffusion, Stable Diffusion Web UI folder. I have Dash Master at the end, ignore that. That's because I have different versions installed for my testing purposes. You go to Models, and then ESRGAN, ERSGRAN, or whatever. And those are all the different ones I've been trying. And I actually went over what the, each one does that I've tested anyways. In this video right here, where I show you how to get ready to train embeddings, but you can just look in the chapters if that's all the part of that video you want to see. So what I like to do is normally with DPM++ HDD, SDE Keras, I can't talk, ah, as I like to do 60 on the sampling steps and then 10 on the high res steps, change the denoising strength to 0.5, and I press tab to get out of that box so it actually saves my stuff in there. Like these drop downs are really frustrating. If you change them and then don't tab out, it doesn't actually change the setting in there. I press control enter to render that. While this runs, why you want to use high res dot fix is not because, oh, it's going to make it high res by duplicating pixels or whatever it does. No, it's because stable diffusion has to render on the size that it was set for. For example, SD 1.5 models work on basically around 512 by 512. Sometimes you can get them to go to 768, but SD 2.0 and 2.1 do 768 by 768. You're able to use whatever is inside of this thing. You're able to use the upscaler itself to change the resolution of the rendered image by allowing Stable Diffusion to render the smaller image and then the plugin to continue generating the image with more generation steps. And that's why I do 60 plus 10 equals 70, because 70 is a good total number for SDE Keras in my experience, actually 70 to 75. So check it out while it's rendering, it's showing that it's rendering just this section where the hand is. And that's the plugin that I'm gonna show you how to install in the next step. All right, it's done. Here's the before and here's the after. Before, after. All right, the plugin is called After Detailer or A Detailer for short, and I'm going to show you how to install it. You're going to go to your Extensions tab and then Install from URL. 
you're gonna paste in the link that I'm gonna give you in the description below, which is from this guy on GitHub, and just hit install, but I already have it installed. After that, you're gonna hit installed, hit check for updates, wait for it to scan all of these, and then apply and restart UI, and then actually fully close your browser and go to your console, my default command line color is red. Uh, don't don't worry about it. And hit Control C to break it, and then hit Y. Yes, I want to break it, and then run it again. This A detailer has to be loaded at the first load of Stable Diffusion. Then go back to Settings, and all the way down on the left, look for the A detailer tab. So when you install it, you'll probably just have this box checked. And you may want to check these two, which is save mask previews and save images before a detailer. And I'll show you what they do. First one is save mask previews. What that does is this and this. So you can see how well that plugin is detecting faces and hands in your generation. And then save images before a detailer is so you can see the before in the after. So this particular image is using a Laura that I trained and it's from Haley Lou Richardson. I saw her in this movie Five Feet Apart, which ironically is about two people who the doctor said you need to stay six feet apart because they both have cystic fibrosis. And what it is is people with this disease, if one person catches cystic fibrosis from someone else that has cystic fibrosis, the version of the disease that they catch from the other person will like kill them within a few days. So they have to stay six feet apart, but they start dating and they decide that they're gonna break the rules and stay five feet apart. It, this movie broke my heart shapes. It was super sad. But anyways, when I was learning how to uh, train embeddings and Laura's, uh, it's one of the things that I did. So just give you an idea of what's going on here. Even the face is better. There's before and there's after. And it looks so much more like her, like there's an actual picture of her. FYI, when you first install it and then reload it in here, like I told you, you'll see like bars like this as it's downloading the models for it. And when you scroll down to your image generation window, you'll see a detailer right here and the models are gonna be in this drop down, okay? And I've only used these top three in my generations. I haven't tried these other ones really because I haven't needed to in my generations. So let's do a demonstration. Let's say that I'm not happy with these hands and I go over to, to the second thing and I change this to hands and I put highly detailed hands. So as you notice here, it says a detailer prompt if blank the main prompt is used. What it's doing is it's applying whatever prompt you put in here only to this section of the image. For example, hands or for the face, it would only do it in that section. So I put highly detailed hands in the positive prompt and for the negative prompt, I would put bad dash hands dash five. And if you wanna try different ones, what I do is I hit extended networks and I go to textual inversion hand or whatever your embedding you want to try is and then I select it with my mouse hit control X to cut it close the extended networks by clicking that again and then go down and I'll paste it in but I already typed it in because I mesmerized it so let's generate that and see how it compares to the recent image so here's this one where I've put negative prompts just for the hands there's the before and there's the after and I'll move this over to the side so we can compare this one to the one earlier that didn't have a negative prompt for the hands. When you're zoomed out, you can't really see how the improvement was, but in the first one, the hand's kind of disappearing into the pocket. And in this one, it's not so much. But you see how the thumb is still kind of weird? And I'm like this, like, wait, where's the thumb supposed to be? Uh, okay. And that's not because of the A detailer, that's because of the model not drawing the, the thumb correctly. But you get my point. But in my experience, using the, the prompt and the negative prompt in a detailer sometimes works, but sometimes doesn't. These images that I'm about to show you were generated using a Laura I made of Billie Eilish. And check out the hands. They're, they're really good because I used a detailer on them. And I'll go through a few of them. But if you want to learn how I got her face to look so good, then you got to be subscribed because I'm working on a video about how to train Laura's. Two nights this week and also two nights last week, I stayed up till 3 a.m. teaching myself 
how to generate LoRa's using a tool called Koya. I have it running right now on another computer. And as you can see, it's pretty daunting with all of these settings that you have here to tinker around with. So the reason why I've been spending a lot of time figuring all this stuff out is because I like to make my videos clear and concise and easy to understand and show you the only the parts that you should focus on when you're generating your images. So be subscribed and click the bell setting on my channel because the none settings means you won't get notified. So now I'm gonna show you more about these images and how the plugin improved them. This is obviously the Billie Eilish stuff I was talking about earlier. Here's where it detected the face. And then here's where it detected the hands. And here's the face before, which is a pretty decent Billie Eilish face. And there's after, which in my opinion is way better. Let's put these side by side. All right, here we go. That's the before and that's after. And that's just the A detailer model taking a lore I made and interpreting it way better than the realistic vision model did. And now this is the model called Photon. And the lore I was using was a one I trained for Zooey Dashnell. And here's the before and here's the after. I'm sorry that it looks kind of grainy and pixelated when I zoomed in. I didn't do high res on these because I just wanted to get some images rendered for the video. I don't have infinite time, you guys. Here's a couple more examples before, after. It detected all these glitchy hands that are down there. Obviously, if your model is generating goofy hands or multiple hands or you didn't put good negative prompts, that's not something that a detailer is going to be able to fix. <laughs> Look at that face and what that's not a hand, that's a boob. Does it make the boob better before, after? Before, after, ah, whatever. But this is amazing though. Look at her face before and after. And here's Zooey Dashnell again, before, after. The other limitation I need to tell you about is kind of like this boob is when it detects things that are not hands. Cause it's going based off of shapes, I think. And that's just something you'll have to deal with. But in my experience, it didn't mess up that many of my generations. I mean, for me, once I want to make a really, really good image and I got a perfect prompt, I'll generate a hundred and go to bed. Well, I'll 300 or something. I'll do, you know, the 512 by 768, 768 by 512 and a 512 by 512, put a hundred in for the batch count of all three and then start them up one and then wait 30 seconds to start the next one, wait 30 seconds and start the next one. More tips like this about how to save time and do other stuff in Stable Diffusion, you can ch check out in this video right here. Uh, well, that's it for this video. Definitely come back to my channel if you want to learn how to train LoRa's. There's a bunch of settings in there, but I'm going to break it down and make it simple and easy to understand. Click here if you want to see a video about how to train embeddings, which are pretty awesome, actually. And click over here if you just want to see a bunch of tricks about generating images in Stable Diffusion. And subscribe with this button. What's it over here? And I'll see you in the next video.